Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a newly discovered mystery of our partner the moon. And in this video we're actually only talking about what was discovered because the mystery itself is still a mystery, we're not entirely sure what's happening right there on the moon. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Man. So um, very recently I was actually finishing up a video that's going to be released very soon about the largest crater in the solar system as of today. And the crater is somewhere right here. You can't actually see it from Earth because it's on the um, far side of the moon, but it's actually a lot easier to see in Universe Sandbox because it's shaded slightly differently. It's this huge, huge formation you see right here, roughly around 2000 kilometers or um, approximately 1400 miles across. If you're looking at it from Earth, which would be something like this, you can only really see a tip of it on the bottom right there. You can actually only see some of the mountains formed by the protrusion from the crater. And this huge crater is known as the South Pole Aitken Basin. And what this represents here is a depression within the moon. In other words, it's kind of like sudden drop in altitude. Now, interestingly, we've studied this crater for quite a long time, and NASA has uh, mapped it quite well. And even right now, there is the famous Chinese mission known as Chang'e 4 that is exploring this area and is trying to figure out what's really happening right there on the surface. And somewhat recently, they have actually discovered that some of the rocks that are in this location are essentially coming from inside the mantle, suggesting that this large collision that created this crater very likely completely upturned the surface of the moon, causing some of the internal mantle to um, eventually settle on top where it was now found by the Chinese explorers. But the new mystery comes from the data um, from this project. This is Project Grail that was launched by NASA back in 2011 and actually finished um, at the end of 2012, where two um, very interesting craft were orbiting the moon and were mapping its uh, gravitational field. Basically, they were creating the gravitational map of the entire satellite. And they did a really good job at it. And even today, we're still finding new results and new unusual mysteries that we didn't really expect. But most importantly, this particular map was able to explain to us why it's so difficult to orbit the moon with a stable orbit. Um, it's so gravitationally bumpy that it causes most of the craft to eventually lose orbit and collide with the moon. And interestingly, at the end of the mission, uh, NASA even created this very beautiful animation um, that was created through various shots taken apart, a few seconds apart. Um, and this animation shows moments before these two probes crashed into the moon, which was also part of the scientific experiment. But anyway, so the GRIL mission is over, but its data is still being analyzed. And what this data discovered is that deep inside of this crater, there's an unusual gravitational anomaly, specifically a really dense, really thick object. Now, okay, before we start going into the aliens here, alien bases or alien explorers, it's not that dense. It's denser than the surrounding areas. In other words, there are two possible explanations. And one of those explanations, which actually is probably the most likely one, is that this is kind of what happened. And so to try to simulate and find out what may have happened, here's an object, it's about 600 kilometers in diameter, and it's going to be colliding with that area of the moon where the crater is located. But the thing about this object is that it's very likely one of the so-called early planetesimals that also on the inside contain a relatively large iron nickel core or some kind of a more dense core than just rock. And when this object collided, which we're going to try to simulate right now, um, it literally just kind of shot through the part of the moon and um, what's going to happen here is that the iron core is going to go through the upper mantle here, although we don't really see it very well in this particular simulation, and it's going to get lodged inside at a depth of around 300 kilometers beneath the surface of the moon, while the rest of the rocks obviously get deposited on the other side of the moon or just in this vicinity. Now, um, we know that the actual collision itself 
very likely took place roughly around 4 billion years ago when the moon was much closer to earth. So it's very likely that a lot of these rocks also ended up on the surface of earth. But interestingly, the core itself seems to have been lodged on the inside, inside of this actual crater. Now it's um, only around 2 times 10 to the power of 18 kilograms in mass, which translates to an object that's about maybe um, this big. So it's not really that large. That's the leftover core that's now inside of the uh, crater itself. And um, this is roughly around 100 or so kilometers in diameter. But this piece is now possibly stuck in there. And we know this simply because of the anomalies of gravitational field that we've detected in this area, but at a depth of around 300 kilometers. Now, um, what this may suggest is that, well, either that uh, sometimes, once in a while, asteroids do actually uh, not completely mix with the rest of the object, like for example, a planet or a moon, and end up kind of just leaving a huge chunk inside, which may have happened here on Earth as well. Or it may have been that the moon, even back then, was no longer really hot on the inside, and so it couldn't really melt this part, and it couldn't really mix it with the rest of the moon. And so it was left as a kind of a chunk. Now that's one of the explanations. The other explanation is that maybe just maybe um, a type of an oxide was formed somewhere deep inside of this crater, but that was not actually the result of the collision, it was instead a result of the period of the moon um, when there was literally lava um, oceans everywhere. And these lava oceans, or in this case magma oceans, may have produced these higher in density um, materials, these minerals that are now detectable from outside of the moon. And maybe that's what we actually detected underneath. Now, uh, this has to be tested further, but for now, I think the best explanation is definitely that it's basically a chunk a core of an asteroid, a large asteroid that collided with the moon and left a piece of itself lodged inside of our satellite. Now, this creates a lot of questions, of course, but also creates an opportunity for us to maybe one day, hopefully, drill deep enough into the moon's um, surface to actually reach and study and maybe even mine this, whatever this is. For all we know, it could be some really cool metals that we don't have on Earth, or some cool metals that are very precious on Earth. So Moon actually might be now a potential target for mining. Although maybe that's not the best thing to do with the Moon, but still, it's something that could maybe give it a bit of a more financial reason to go and settle, even though this core is technically kind of tiny. Now, further studies will definitely explore this idea even more. Um, unfortunately, unless we really drill something like 16 to 18 kilometers deep down, we're not going to be able to collect any samples, but um, we can uh, potentially analyze all of this using the data from the uh, GRAIL mission that I showed you previously. So future scans of the moon, along with future explorations of the moon, might help us discover what's really happening in this unusual biggest crater in the solar system. This crater right here that I've just recreated using Universe Sandbox, um, almost identical to the original crater in size. So anyway, on that note, uh, once we discover what's hiding beneath the surface of this crater, I'm going to come back and talk about it again, but for now that's all we know. It's a mystery, but it's a very interesting scientific mystery, not really a conspiracy. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and maybe even share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn more about sciences and space. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. But anyway, thank you for everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out.